Good evening. It is time to get in the Word. It's time to study the truth of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. Seems like everything else is falling down around us. Everything that's nailed down seems like it's coming loose. So we need to make sure on this wonderful Wednesday night that we are standing on a solid foundation, which is the word of God. Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Workmen, workmen need not to be made ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me say I'd like to invite uh, those who are listening. If you want to become a member of the Wings of Love ministry virtually, we invite you to do so. Uh, you can call at 862-3894. That is my home number. If you'd like to be a member of Wings of Love virtually until we come back, I'll be glad to have you. This is a church where love is expressed, exemplified, and experienced. It is the love of God. So I would be glad to have you to become a part of the Wings of Love family. Tonight, I believe that we are under a lot of stress and strain. and We are struggling still through this pandemic because it has been prolonged. And perhaps some have lost hope, and you're about to give up. And tonight, I want to give you a word of encouragement, a word of comfort, a word that will provoke your thinking, a word that will not cause you to throw in the towel, to surrender, and to give up. This word that I'm going to bring, that the Lord has given to me, that I want to share with you, have been a blessing and a benefit to me during this pandemic. I say, Lord, what can I bring to your people? What, what can I give them that will inspire them, watch this, before they expire? And God dropped this in my spirit on tonight. Let's go to the New Testament collection of writings, the New Testament in God's Holy Writ, in the Bible. First Peter, first Peter, chapter five, begin reading at verse six. First Peter, chapter five, not going to be long tonight, begin reading at verse six and a few of the following verses. It reads thus. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all, not some, not a few, not a portion, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, be grave, be serious. Don't be intoxicated and inebriated with materialism or the things of this world. Be sober, be vigilant, be watchful, be alert, because your adversary, the devil, he is our enemy. He is a foe and not a friend, the devil, as a roaring, roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour or destroy. Tonight we want to discuss, this is a monologue, or a dialogue rather, not a monologue. You can get involved in this, even virtually. Counsel, 
concerning our cares. Let me say that again. Let me make it crystal clear because I want you to get this tonight. It's going to help you in the area of frustration and your irritation and your aggravation. Y'all feel me tonight? Counsel concerning our cares. Now, when I was going to Inkster High, attended Inkster High School, and uh, before I graduated in 1977, telling my age now, <laughs> we used to go to the counselor's office. They had counselors during that particular time when I was in school. Not only did you have uh, a superintendent, a principal, and teachers, but uh, also counselors. And if you needed a situation to be resolved or a problem to be solved, or if you wanted to switch a class, you could go to the counselor. And the counselor would be there to assist you, to help you, to give you good advice. Now that's what counsel means. It means to give advice to someone. And so I appreciate my counselor. Her name was Miss Smith. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it's good to know that we have Jesus Christ, who is our counselor. Let me tell you, you have to be careful who you go to for counsel. Let me give you an example. How could someone tell you how to train and discipline your children when they don't have any? How can someone come to you, you're married and they are not married, and tell you what to do in your marriage, how you should treat your husband or your wife, and they'll tell you, if I was you, well, let me tell you tonight, you are not me. <laughs> so be careful who you go to for counsel. Why, Pastor Jay? Because there is such a thing as good counsel and bad counsel. Good advice and bad advice. Because if you listen to someone and receive the wrong counsel, it can be detrimental to your well-being. But good counsel would help you in the area of your mental and your emotional and perhaps your physical, most importantly, your spiritual. So there's a difference between good advice and bad advice, good counsel and bad counsel. But here tonight, Peter gives us good counsel concerning our cares. Peter, impetuous Peter, outspoken Peter. Peter who said, if all these men deny you, I will not deny you. I even die for you. You know uh, the saga, the story. He denied Jesus three times. Jesus told him he was going to do it. But let me tell you before you point the finger at Peter, though he denied him, Jesus restored him. He said, I prayed for you, Peter, that your faith <laughs> fail not because the devil, Satan, desired to sift you. And so Peter, when Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to Peter and he said, lovest thou me more than these? And I don't really have time to go into it. And he declared his love for Jesus three times. He denied him three times, but then 
On the other hand, he declared his love for Jesus three times. This is the same Peter. Peter who preached and 3,000 souls was added to the church. And so here the epistle Peter, the letter Peter from Peter is given to us in 2020. Now let me give you a little history of First Peter and Second Peter, but tonight we're going to look at First Peter. The believers were experiencing persecution and uh, their possessions or houses were being taken. They were under severe trials. And so Peter here gives this letter to encourage the believers in the body of Christ not to give up, not to surrender, not to throw in the towel, but to continue to walk with Jesus the Christ. Listen tonight, brothers and sisters, this is the counsel that we need. I need it and you need it. Because let me tell you, <laughs> you can't smoke your cares away. You can't sniff your cares away. I don't care how many blunts you smoke, you can't smoke your cares away. You can't drink your cares away. I don't care how many women you have on your arms. You can't have a multitude of women and think that's going to erase your care or vice versa. A multitude of men think that's going to erase your care. Sexual escapades, that's not going to help you deal with your care. What do care mean? I'm glad you asked. Are you interested? I am intrigued about this term, care. Repeat after me, care. It means mental distress. You need to put this down because you're going to need this. I hope that we'll be over this pandemic in 2021, but if not, you're going to need this. Care mean mental distress and uncertainty, worry. It means to distract. Let me tell you something. Care can distract you to the point where you don't pray like you should. You're not active in your devotional life because care have overwhelmed you and overshadowed you. It distracts you. Not only do care distract you, another meaning of care is to, watch this, be pulled or to draw in different directions. First of all, you're happy one day, <laughs> then you say it another. You're fun feel one day, then you're fretting another day. You, you are drawn in different directions. You high one day, you low one day. There's euphoria one day, then there's low ebb. That's what I mean, high and low, another day. You don't know which way to turn, where to go. Don't miss this tonight. You are drawn and pulled in different directions. The Bible says that a double-minded is unstable in all his ways. Listen, my brothers and sisters, we must fix our focus and fix our focus on Jesus Christ. Don't be so focused, don't miss this, on your cares that it keep you from focusing on Christ. Oh, I want to teach this tonight. Counsel concerning our care. Listen to what Peter says in 1 Peter 5. Listen to his counsel. Let's go to verse 7. 
then we'll go to verse 6 and 8, but I want to look at verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Let me give you another connotation for care. That is, brothers and sisters, anxiety. That's another term, anxiety. Listen to what the Bible says. I need you to get in the Word. Go to Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. You've got to hear this tonight. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer. Pray about it and petition. In other words, a definite request with thanksgiving. So when you pray, you ought to come and give God thanksgiving for answering what you prayed for. Continue to make your wants or needs known to God. Well, Pastor, don't God already know what I need? Don't he know I, I don't have a job? Don't God know that my friends are few, my bills are high, my money is low? Yes, God knows, but he wants you to ask. Ask in the name of Jesus Christ and it shall be given. You have not because you ask not. Make your request known to God. Tell God about it. Verse 7, and God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. Assured, in other words, to be rescued even in the midst of reversals or changes in life. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, God will meet our needs. There's a difference between want and need, and we ought to praise God during this Bible discussion, for God has already met your need. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and thank him and praise him while I'm still teaching. That peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison, this is the amplified version, in other words, guard or mount, watch this, over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, the peace of God will keep you mentally, I know what I'm talking about, and emotionally. Let me say that again. The peace of God will keep you mentally and emotionally. If you don't have a dime in your pocket, you don't know how you're going to make ends meet. You don't even know if you're going to have a job tomorrow. But you have the peace of knowing, don't miss this, that God will provide. You have the peace of knowing that God will provide, that God will supply all of my needs. Before you go to bed, you need to read <laughs> the sixth chapter of St. Matthew's. And I believe around, you can do this tonight, start with the 24th verse. I don't have time to go through all of it. That'll be something that you can read tonight. Let me, let me, let me give it to you again. St. Matthew's in the New Testament, put this down. You need to read this before you go to bed. The sixth chapter, you're going to be able to sleep better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. You're going to be able to rest better tonight when you read this. 
sixth chapter, beginning with verse 24. And Jesus was telling his disciples to take no thought. Don't worry. Don't be filled with anxiety or care. Take no thought for your life because that's where the devil attack us in the area of our mind. Come on. That's the area where he attack us in the area of our thinking. Take no thought for your life, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. The Lord know that you have need of these things. And if he take care of the birds and clothe the lilies, don't you know God can feed us and put clothes on our back? He mentions in this particular chapter how the Gentiles seek those things. They, they are constantly looking and going, pursuing and seeking and going after stuff, things. But we as believers are not to constantly be seeking and pursuing stuff and the things of this life. Listen to what he said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, seek to do what's right. God has shown us in his word what is right. You just do what is right. Seek his kingdom. Watch this. And his righteousness. Seek to be a member. Seek to be a citizen of his kingdom. And don't you know when you're in his kingdom, he's going to take care of you. And all these things shall be added. Hallelujah. Unto you. And so my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you shouldn't even be worried today. The night is Wednesday. Don't even worry about Thursday. There's going to be enough trouble <laughs> tomorrow. And so I like what one writer said. Do not bring tomorrow's clouds over today's sunshine. Oh, I think I said something there. Do not bring tomorrow's clouds over today's sunshine. Live one day at a time. Don't even try to live for tomorrow about what to eat, what to drink, what to put on, shelter over my head. That's the areas where we worry. Watch this. Fitness, <laughs> your health, fashion, Finance, fitness, finance. Y'all with me? Watch this. Fashion and food. <laughs> I mean, those are the areas that we really, we worry about. Don't worry about it. God will provide and support your need. I can't say it enough. You take care of the birds, God will take care of you. Even if the sparrow falls to the ground, it does not fall without God's observation and God noticing it. Casting our cares or burdens on him is presented in this text. We're going back to 1 Peter chapter 5 as an incentive for Humbling ourselves under the sovereign purposes and work of God. I'm going to explain that later. The basic principles uh, here is that, principle rather here, is that as our problems are, so shall the Lord be. You need to know no matter how many problems you have, know that the Lord is there to, to help you. You remember I told you about the counselor. God is there to help and assist us. And so we need to understand, brothers and sisters, that we should never tell, watch this, God about our problems. We need to tell our problems about God. This means we will experience his sufficiency. In other words, God is enough. Even in our efficiency, when we are deficiency, rather, God is sufficient. Let me say that again. In our deficiency, God is our sufficiency. In other words, God is enough 
If God is all you have left, you'll find out during this pandemic, God is all you need. We have the responsibility tonight to cast our burdens. Didn't say carry. Let me say that again. Cast, don't carry our burdens. Watch this. On the Lord. We got to cast our burdens on the Lord. Don't carry them. Listen tonight. God will not allow us to be moved. He has promised that. We will not be shaken. We give our burdens. We cast them. We do not carry them. I want to read another passage of Scripture in Psalms tonight. And you need to get this. Psalm 55, verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. I got three points, and then we're going to get out of here. Psalm 55, verse 22. We have the responsibility to cast our burdens on the Lord, and he promised to not allow us to be moved or shaken. Watch this. It reads thus, cast, here it is again, not carry, not hold on to it. Cast thy burden Upon the Lord, even Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When you're loaded down, when you're burdened down, <laughs> said, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Now, let me tell you, I had uh, my secretary to tell me, my trustee to tell uh, well, secretary, she said, Pastor, I, I, I don't know, we can, you know, you got two checks coming. This was during, I think, the month of March when the pandemic began. Say, you got two checks, and that, that, that'll be it. And I say, well, I'm going to have to go in my retirement. But let me tell you as a witness and a, give my testimony on tonight. I didn't read it out of, in a book. I didn't sat in a class. This is firsthand information. This is experience. I have, watch this. I had food to eat, clothes to wear, still got a roof over my head, and some money in my pocket today. And they only said, you ain't going to have nothing but just two checks. And I just want to praise God for the people of God who God have used to help the pastor. And I am here to tell you, brothers and sisters, when you learn how to cast your cares, your burdens, your load, give it to the Lord. I am here to tell you. <laughs> Boy, I almost want to jump out of this chair. When I gave my care to the Lord, even though we're not in this building, God will make a way when there seemed to be no way. All right, I better continue for I, uh, I, I, I get happy up in here. Listen, tonight, three things I want to point out. And let's go back. To First Peter, I need you to get this tonight because it's going to be a blessing to you. Let's go back to First Peter, chapter five. Three things I want to point out. Remember, we are talking about counsel concerning our cares, and here Peter gives us good counsel. Tell us what we need to do. This is good advice. Peter was experienced. It's not secondhand information. This is firsthand information for us tonight. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you would apply this to your life and living, you won't have to be stressed out, frustrated, worried, filled with anxiety, or any of those negative realities. First of all, you can put this down. This is good counsel. Relying on God. Repeat after me, relying on God. I ain't going to be long tonight. Listen to what he says in verse 6. You remember I told you earlier, we're going to go back to it. Verse 6, relying on God. Not waiting on the stimulus check. <laughs> Isn't that strange? It's, it's so odd. Pastor haven't gotten his stimulus check yet. Lady J got hers, but Pastor didn't get his. And there's a reason for that. 
<laughs> relying on God. I am depending on God, not the government. I, we appreciate what the government is doing, but I am relying on God. Listen to me tonight. Get this. Your job was just a resource. Hallelujah. That's what your job is, just a resource, but our source tonight is God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God, from above. So rely on God, depend on God. Listen to what verse 6 says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Listen, our supreme weakness is our vulnerability to the pride of living independently of God. Pastor, why are you talking so loud? I want you to get this because some folk think because of their education or because of their wherewithal or because their family background or their pedigree or they think that they have a lot of money. They think that they can live independently of God. Let me tell you, child of God, how many have come to know on tonight that we really can't live independently of God. We have to rely and depend on God for everything. I depend and rely on God for every breath I take, for the blood running warm in my veins, for sight in my eyes, for a voice in my mouth, for hearing in my ears, for thinking in my mind. I can't walk, can't talk, can't do nothing without God. Rely on God. Listen to what verse, verse 5 says. I want you to go down to the latter portion of this, this passage, verse 5, in chapter 5 of 1 Peter. Listen to what he says. For God, for God resists the proud. Now, you can go around here with your arrogant self. You can go, down, go around here, be filled with pride, act like you don't need God. Go ahead. God going to resist you. And give it grace to the humble. The humble depend on God. The humble rely on God. Come on, help me tonight. Don't miss this, brothers and sisters. He says right here in verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. In sickness and in health, I'm under the mighty hand. In good times and bad times, I'm under the mighty hand. Up and down, I'm under the mighty hand. Full or empty, I'm under his mighty hand. I humble myself. I don't come arrogant. I don't come filled with pride. I wish somebody helped me on the night. I, 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 I get in a low place. And I come before God. And let me tell you something. When you come to the throne of grace, you can come boldly and you can find grace and mercy to help in time of need. Humble yourself by saying, Lord, I'm relying on you. That's the first thing I want you to see. Don't miss this. Now, while you're under the mighty hand of God, watch this. He that humble himself shall be exalted but he that exalts himself shall be made a base or brought low. <laughs> Listen, my brothers and sisters, let me show you something. Under his hand, he will, watch this, keep you, even while you're under his hand. But if he turn his hand around, he will uphold you. <laughs> Somebody got to talk to me on the night. The same hand that you under when he turn it over, he will uphold you. The Bible say with the right hand of his righteousness. When you're weak, when you can't hold yourself, when you feel like you can't go on, when you're down to your last, last dime, when you feel like I can't take it, I'm about to take my life. No, I want you to know that the same hand that you under, the 
same hand when he turn it over can uphold you. You know how I'm able to make it? Because that same hand I'm under is holding me up. Hallelujah. First point is relying on God. Secondly, releasing your care. Listen to what verse 7 says. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Casting all your care. Oh, somebody got to get this. There's a relying on God. And when you rely on God, you got to wait on him because in due time, I want you to get this, he's going to lift you. Oh, I feel, I feel the anointing on tonight. Watch this. You see, brothers and sisters, that when you're humble under his hand, honor. Oh, I think I said something on this night. <laughs> Don't miss this. Under his hand, you humble, you will be honored. And God will lift you from that low place of sadness, suffering, and sorrow. Relying on God. Secondly tonight, releasing your care. What care? What worries do you have on tonight? Cares about your family. Release it. Cares about your children. I have two children. And I thank God for Alvin Jackson Jr. and Tiffany Monique Jackson. They're my grandchildren. But let me tell you what I have done. I have cares. I have, I, I, sometimes I get worried. I try not to worry. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, I have released it. I've released my children to God. Come on, you can put the pills down. Sedatives and tranquilizers, <laughs> sleeping pills. How many know you don't took all that? You've taken all of that and you still up, can't sleep. <laughs> Trying to sleep, but you still up. I have, watch this, released my grandchildren over to the Lord. Release it. Cares about your family, cares about your children, cares about your husband, cares about your wife, care about, cares about your job, cares about your business, cares about your debt, cares about your health, and cares about the future. I don't know what the future holds, but I know he that holds the future also holds my hand. Release your care on this wonderful Wednesday night. Look at somebody probably in the room with you and say, we're going to let it go. Let go and let God. You can save yourself from migraine headaches. You can save yourself from ulcers developing in your stomach. Or a heart attack. Talk to me, somebody. Release your care. I have released my care concerning the church. Lord, I give wings of love to you. Hallelujah. I give my debt to you. Not that I'm not going to work on my debt, but I still give it to him that he give me the wisdom on how to get out of it. I want you to get this tonight. Just about through. Or finish relying on God, releasing your care. Number three, recognize that God is concerned. Now, that's another connotation. Concern means that God is interested in you. He's interested tonight in what is bothering you, hurting you, harassing you, harming you. Let me tell you something. There are many people don't even care if we came or went, <laughs> live or die. They don't even care about our condition. But we can be thankful tonight that God is interested in us. God is concerned about us. God will not forsake us nor leave us. When nobody else is concerned about you. God is. Concerned. Watch this mean protection, regard to make provision. If no one else is concerned about your needs tonight, 
God is. He is concerned about the sorrows that you have had, the difficulties that you have confronted, the responsibilities tonight that you have showed, the sacrifices that you have made, the pain that you have felt, the hardships that you have suffered, and the discouragement that you have, have had to overcome. God is concerned about you. He's concerned about me. He's concerned about what you're going through, your needs, your condition, your circumstances. As long as we believe that we can live without the concern of God, we are doomed to inevitable anxiety with all its mental and moral consequences. Jesus' disciples asked when they were in a storm, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus wiped sleep out of his eyes and got up, stood on the ship and said, Peace be still. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. He stood up and said, Peace be still. Don't miss this. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You're in the midst of worry and anxiety and, and care, there's turbulence and turmoil within your soul, within your mind, within your heart. Jesus is saying to you tonight while you're listening, peace, be still. Peace, be still. I'm speaking it virtually. Peace in your mind. Peace in your heart. Peace in your soul. Peace in your life. No pandemonium. I speak peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Listen tonight. You're not going to sink, but you're going to survive because you have the Savior <laughs> on your ship. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. Stop tripping and start trusting and see yourself thriving. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm getting ready to close, but I, I got to tell you this. Stop tripping, start trusting, and see yourself thriving. Listen. Brothers and sisters, God's concern for his own is not an occasional thing. It is constant. He is constantly walking with us and watching over us. The devil will try to convince us that nobody is concerned about us. And let me tell you tonight, don't listen to him. Recognize that God is concerned about you. Listen to what he says right here. In the fifth chapter of 1 Peter, verse 8 says, be sober. Remember I told you earlier, be grave, be serious. Don't be inebriated and intoxicated with the things of this world, material things. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, the devil don't like you. And you ought to say, I don't like you either. The devil don't like me. Well, I'm going to say it in this, but I don't like you either. Watch this. He's walking as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom he may destroy. The devil comes to steal Watch this, kill and destroy. The devil's not concerned about you. Let me tell you what a lion will do, and we're out of here. A lion will go after the small, the newborn, and the young because they're not strong. Not only the small, but the slow. Watch this. You ever seen those wildebeest? They're not alert. They're not quick. <laughs> the lion just devour. He go after the small, the slow. He go after the sickly, sickly. The animals just ain't really feeling good. They're weak. Then he go after the strain. Those who have strayed from the fold, the protection of the group. The lion go after them and devour them. 
roar, the lion roars. Just to hear a lion roar in the jungle brings fear to the other animal. Let me tell you tonight, don't, do not listen to the devil. Y'all got to get this tonight. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to that roaring lion. You know what that roaring lion remind me of? The devil remind me of Scar in Lion King. <laughs> but let me tell you who our Lion King is. Come on with me tonight. Who can beat Scar? Who can already defeated that roaring lion? He defeated that roaring lion. He over, watch this, he overcome that roaring lion. He defeated him. He was victorious over that wrong line because Jesus is the Lion of Judah. Listen, brothers and sisters, are you hurting inside, being abused, facing danger, under pressure, treated unjustly? Recognize tonight that God is concerned about what is troubling you. Listen to what Isaiah 40, chapter 41 we're getting ready to close. Verse 10 says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. God is present. Be not dismayed, disturbed, upset, tensed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee when you get weak. Yea, I will help you if you find help from nobody else. Yea, I will uphold thee. Remember I told you earlier, with the right hand, of my righteousness. There's a song in the old school church they used to sing by Dr. Charles Gabriel. He said, I trust in God wherever I may be upon the land. Come on, I need some old, old school church members in here. Or on the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly father, hallelujah, glory, my heavenly father watches over me. I trust in God. I know he cares. He is concerned for me on mountain peak or on the stormy sea, though pillows roll. He keeps my poso. My heavenly father watches over me. Every head bow, every eye closed, dear God our Father, we pray tonight that thou would help us to let, to let go and to give it to you and not to carry around our cares, to release our anxieties and to release our worries and fears frustrations over to you, trusting in you, Lord, knowing that you already have provided what we need. We thank you for meeting our needs during this pandemic, for providing and making a way for us. We give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three ways that you can give, and I really appreciate and thank God for you. Sow your seed so you can reap a harvest. I want you to know you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. God, my brothers and sisters, have given us a seed to sow. A seed is what we sow. We don't eat it. Trust God to bring about the harvest. God love you, and so do I.